Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will talk about a topic that a lot of people seem to have struggled with and that is how you can hide your API keys in your Android app. So you can actually make sure that your Android app is safe, that you can release it with your API keys in it. And there are first of all a lot of misconceptions when it comes to API keys and reverse engineering. So if you're new to that, reverse engineering just means that someone a potential attacker, for example, takes your APK file that you uploaded to Google Play, there are easy ways to download that, and tries to extract the source code again out of this APK file to find potential API keys in that to maybe change some of your code and actually yeah, make the app do what the attacker wants and not what you want uh, it to do. And a common misconception is that you can prevent this, but you can't. You upload your APK to Google Play Every attacker can download it and they have full control over what is inside of that APK. But you can make it a lot harder for these attackers to actually find sensitive data that is in your app. First of all, I will show you a way that I recommend to actually just prevent that your API keys will appear in version control. So in your GitHub repository, for example, because that can also be an issue if there are potential team members who shouldn't see that, or if you have a public GitHub repository, then anybody could see that API key in your repository. So you usually don't want to put your API keys in your repository. How do you accomplish that, that they are not in that repository? Well, you will put them in a file which you put in gitignore. So we have a beautiful um, gitignore file which I don't have here because it's not a repo. Or maybe if I switch to the project view then there is a gitignore file. So in that file we just specify all the paths and all the files we don't want to, we don't want our repository to contain. And you can see there is a local properties file that is a Gradle file. So um, those, that just contains local Gradle properties. So if you want to have Gradle configuration that is very specific to your machine and not to the machines of your coworkers, for example, then that is the file where you can um, put your configuration in. And that's also a file where you can put in your API keys as Gradle variables. And that is what we will actually use to prevent our API key from appearing in version control. As I said, that will not make it safe from reverse engineering. So if you do that and you upload your APK to Google Play, of course the API key needs to be in that APK so the APK can make the network calls or whatever you need it for. Um, but after I show you this approach, I will show you an approach that makes it a lot harder for attackers to actually get your API key. So as I said, this way won't protect your API key from attackers because in the end it needs to be in your APK that you upload to Google Play in order to be able to make network calls. I think that makes sense, but it will help you to uh, protect it from team members. I will of course also show you in this video what you should do with your API keys to truly protect them from attackers. First of all, we want to go to our build.gradle file, actually the one in app. And here in our default conflict, conflict block, we want to create a so-called build config field. So build config field is just um, an extra field that you can access directly in your Kotlin code that um, is created during compilation. So Gradle will actually create that field when it compiles your app. So that build config field will contain your API key in the end, which we will read from that local properties file. There's also a normal Gradle properties file, which is the public one you can say, and that is included in version control. Um, so if you want to share a Gradle configuration, then you can put it in this file, but the, the API key is something you don't want to, you don't want to share. Um, so we put it in local properties. However, by default, you can't read from that in a Gradle file. So we kind of need to do that manually, which is very easy. We just create something called properties here in good old Java fashion, properties, properties is equal to uh, new properties. And with these properties, we can actually now read something. And we want to read that local properties file. So we can say properties.load project.root project.file. Now we need to specify which file we want to read, and that is local.properties. And then we say dot new data input stream. And auto completion won't complete that, but that function exists. And now we want to read a um, we want to read a field from that specific file, which we can do like this. So we specify a so-called build config field, which again will just make sure that we can access this in our Kotlin code. That field is of type string, so that is the first parameter we need to specify. 
The second one is the name of the field, which we'll call API key. And the third field is where we can get the value for that from. And here we actually need to start with a, uh, how do we do that? Um, a backslash and quotes. And then we say properties dot get property. And we want to get the API key property. And we again need to um, append a quote here with a backslash like this. And that's how we can basically specify that build config field, which we can then access in our code. If you now go to our local properties file, we need to specify that here, just like this API underscore key. And here we can then specify our actual API key, which I of course don't have here. If we then click synchronize now, then after Gradle actually synchronized, we want to rebuild because that is where that field is basically compiled into our source code. So we click rebuild. And if we then go to our main activity, for example, to see if we can access this after the rebuild, let's just go in here. And once the build is finished, we want to write something like, well, API key is equal to build config dot API key. And there you go. If we now go on this, hit um, actually control Q, then you will see that we actually successfully write the value ABC here, which would of course be the replacement for your API key in your app. However, what do we now do to truly protect your API key from reverse engineering? Because that, um, what we just did here is only to prevent it from being in the repository. And the disappointing answer is you can't fully prevent attackers from getting your API key. However, what you can do is, or what you can very often do is, you can protect it server side. So for example, if you have Firebase and you use that in your app, then you typically include that um, Google services JSON file, I think, which basically gives you access to your Firebase project. Uh, but in Firebase, for example, you can set up security rules. And with these security rules, you can make sure that only your specific app is actually allowed to talk to Firebase or to talk to your specific Firebase project. And the same way other typical like bigger uh, providers of APIs will also offer you the option to actually kind of secure your API key server side so that not everybody can use it or every app can use it. Usually on Android though, the API keys you have in your app aren't that sensitive anyways. So when I think about API keys you typically have in Android apps, then I can think of things like, for example, for Crashlytics or general, just crash logging in general. And it wouldn't be a disaster if someone gets your API key for crash logging, because what are they going to do with that? N not much. And the API keys that are really dangerous, like let's say you have a Stripe API key for payment integration or PayPal, those usually just sit server side and a reverse engineer won't be able to get your server side code because only you have access to your server, at least ideally. So instead your app will then make the request to your server, your server has the API key and makes the request to the Stripe servers, PayPal servers, whatever. So I actually can't think of a real dangerous API key you have to put in your Android app and where you don't have the option to actually secure that server side. I really don't know that. However, very quickly, in case you want to make it very hard for attackers to reverse engineer your app, you simply want to go to build a Gradle app and you want to set this minify enabled to true. That will enable so-called R8 and code obfuscation, which will just, yeah, make your code in your classes very unreadable before actually deploying your app just for the release build. So it will rename your classes, your variables, your functions to very short unreadable names so that even if an attacker gets your source code, like your APK and your source code with that, then they will have a very, very hard time understanding what does which um, because you, you don't have clear class names. However, in this case, this won't um, kind of make our API key hard to read because our API key of course needs to be unchanged to be able to be understood by the API. So this does not prevent reverse engineers get your API key, but it makes it very hard to find the API key in code.
and to potentially do more damage to your app. Um, like also, yeah, kind of create a correct version of that or something like that. So I hope that a video was helpful for you. If you want more security tips for Android, then let me know that down below and also what kind of security tips you actually like because that's a common question I get, but rarely something very concrete like about which topic. So definitely put that down in the comments and apart from that, I wish you an amazing rest of the week. See you in the next video. Bye bye.